This is 91.3 FM WCUW in Worcester, Massachusetts, the Dr. Chris Radio of Horror program. And on the show with us now is Tim. He happens to run the Texas Chainsaw Massacre.net, probably the most comprehensible, up to date, information filled site on the internet about everything to do with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the upcoming part seven, I guess, is going to be called, you know, whatever the heck that's going to be called. Is that right, Tim? Your, your website covers everything? Uh, as much as possible, yes. <laughs> okay, so so as, as the guy who runs the fan sites and the guy who's been on the DVD, uh, the Blu-ray for the 40th anniversary, which is really cool, by the way, um, do you have any inside information about the upcoming uh, Leatherface prequel? Because... There's, there's, they already made a level, uh, a prequel to the remake. This is a prequel to the original, right? That's my understanding. Yes, uh, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't have much right now, but what always happens with these films is, is I start, start getting work from Chainsaw fans who are closer to, to the action than I am. Uh, I've, I've had, I've had fans that, that just come dripping out of the woodwork. Who, <laughs> I mean, pictures from the from the film set. You know, I've I've had I've had fans that have actually camped out overnight at film film sets. You know, taking pictures and sending them to me, and and, and movie producers getting mad at me for <laughs> for leaking them. So I I feel I feel very fortunate that 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 fans out there uh, come come to me with those resources rather than me having to go out and hunt them down myself. Yeah, but those producers can't get mad at you because uh, the fans didn't sign no non-disclosure agreement, and neither did you. So you know, <laughs> screw them. Yeah. They're making. Yeah. They have. They're sitting in Rolls Royces in their jacuzzis, drinking their champagne, banging their hot women. You know, doing their cocaine. I don't want to hear this getting mad over a couple leaked pictures, please. Yeah. Yeah, give it a rest. I mean, whatever. Your movie's gonna your your movie's gonna cost like thirty five, forty million dollars to make, and it'll make back what it cost to make it because fans need a new, you know, want uh, a another horror movie that's gonna be in the in a franchise that they like. So, whatever. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that people can find out when they go to the, your website besides just basic information that they can find on like a DVD or a Blu ray? Like, 
Um, when did you start the website? Uh, that would be 1998. Uh, I think it was the summer of 1998. All I did was, was, was I was I was really curious about where where the quote unquote leather faced house was in Austin, and I missed missed the house by like a few days because they just moved to the King's uh, restaurant actually but but I took a few pictures I, I had like maybe <clears throat> six or seven pictures and I and I put those them on a uh, on a completely different domain that was dependent on the company that I owned at, at the time and and I registered it on altavista.com which, which was the premier search, search engine back in the day and uh, it just just kind of snowballed from there. So, yeah, it's been many, uh, 17 years now, with, with, which is a pretty long time in Internet terms. <laughs> um. I, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's honestly one of the most detailed fan sites I've ever seen. I compare it to probably the Halloween movies website, the Friday the Thirteenth um, website. That you know, that that that's got a ton of information, and um, you know, outside of the realm of horror, uh, the, one of my other f- uh, f- you know bunch of favorite sites are there's a couple Transformer sites, but the Superman homepage. Um, also, is probably one of the most comprehensive, detailed websites run by a fan on the Man of Steel, um, and I compare your your site to that. Well, out of all the films, which is your favorite? And you can't say the original. <laughs> if, if, if I can't say the original, um, it would it would have to be number two um, because Toby Hooper was uh, uh, he, he he directed that one. You still had Jim Cito, uh who who con- continued his character as as the cook in it. Um, and, and it was still shot in Austin and uh, uh, surrounding areas. And I think, think, think from there it just, you know, kind of, kind of went downhill. So, so, so you still had quite a few of the original crews that was working on the next film. Uh, but at, 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 after that, it's really easy to to dis- dismiss. I mean, I, if I remember correctly, I think the sequel after no- number two completely departed from the original storyline that one and two shared you know yeah i um i'll be honest with you i've only ever seen one i've seen half of two not really all that interested and uh the the remake the prequel and then the 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 3d film Do you own a ton of Texas Chainsaw memorabilia? Do you own stuff from the films? Uh, do you have your own Leatherface costume? <laughs> uh, I'm speaking to you from, from my studio, with, with, which I primarily use for music, but this is also my, my, my Texas Chainsaw repository, I guess you would call it, uh, uh, because uh, I can't understand why my wife won't let me put up the <laughs> <laughs> in, in my original poster and my uh, 2004 po- uh, poster, you know, I'm, I'm as I'm speaking to, I'm just, just kind of going through them all. And uh, so, so, so yes, I've got tons of, of autographs. Uh, I've got parts of the house, um, original parts, because when when the house got moved from Round Rock where it was built and it moved up to Kingsland, which is about two hours west of Austin. Uh, the owners actually looked me up. 
up so that uh, I could kind of help them sell parts of the house. Uh, uh, when, when they were renovating the house we, and, and remodeling it, they were replacing a lot of items that were in the house uh, and said, well, we, they realized that, that there's monetary value on it from chainsaw fans. And so so uh, I coordinated a lot of the auctioning on eBay, stuff like seven foot high doors, I auctioned the original sink that the leather base tried this chainsaw on during Turk's dismemberment scene, uh, cabinets from the kitchen, a bunch of spindles from the staircases, uh, from, from the front porch. So, so, so I've got a few of those that I kept. Um, I've got, oh my gosh, uh, some of the parts of the house that I found on Quick Hill where, where the house used to be. Um, I've got autographed figures that Gunner has signed. Um, original poster that that was given to me by Alan Danziger that he kept in his attic since the movie came out. Most people at the time. Um, geez, I could go on and on. <laughs> uh, there, there's there's still, still several things out there that I, I want. I don't have a original press kit. I don't have a original lobby card and stuff. But, um, and the foreign posters, I could just go on, on and on. Those are worth a, a lot of money, and, and there's a lot of them out there. So, so, so I, I do have an impressive collection, but I, but I think my wife would probably divorce me if I spent any short time and money into this endeavor. Have you ever thought about putting together a... Uh, comprehensive documentary on the entire Texas Chainsaw franchise like they did with the Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street ones? Have you seen those? I, I have not seen them uh, to be completely honest with you uh, but I'm not sure it's really worth it um, because I think most Chainsaw fans would agree that a lot of the, the films that came out at, after the first sequel are hardly worth worth mentioning. I, maybe, maybe you can tell me that when when you when you, when you talk about Friday the Thirteenth franchise, I, I don't even know if the storyline is linear through all of those movies or not. It's yeah. linear in a way that. Um, the fans have done a good job of figuring out, like for one, for instance, two, three, and four take place on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm not joking. Um, then you have some time passes, and they move ahead a little bit because Jason stays dead for a while for him to come back as a zombie Jason. Because in part five, it's not really Jason. Spoiler alert. Um, in part six, he comes back as zombie Jason. Um, the only thing that's never in continuity is the mask and the damage done to Jason's body is never the same. You know what I mean? That's always different. Sure. But sure. Th- but uh, parts four, five, and six are, are, call, are called the Tommy Jarvis trilogy where it's the same act – it's not the same act, but the same character coming back to fight Jason. You know what I mean? And he's grown up and he fights Jason again. He grows up and he fights Jason again. Um, it's by the time it hits the New Line cinema films, which are Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X, and Freddy vs. Jason, and the remake, that the, 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 line, the linear timeline goes right out the door. But the Paramount films are pretty much as linear as you're going to get with the film series that was made in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the problem with Chainsaw, is that, is that after the, the first sequel, it just jumps around. It, 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 it's different characters, different names. Now, granted, I, I, I think they're trying to keep it linear since the 2004 film. I, I, I could be wrong. Uh, but, but, but besides the fact that I don't have any film skills, although I wish I did, even if I did and I tried to, to do a project like that, I think I would prob- probably just degrade it into pointing out all the flaws of the, of the films rather than showing them in a more positive light. Um, you said you also do tours and stuff. Do you just do it of the original stuff? You don't do any of the sequel stuff, right? Uh, I do, yes. Um, I, I got a film. The, 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 the 2004 film and the, I think the 2008 film. Uh, those, both, both of those movies shared very 
similar film locations, like they both use the same house, which is in Granger, Texas. And I believe both were had scenes, scenes of the Sealy store, at least one, one of them did anyway. Um, but other film locations from both of those movies are basically in the same general area. So it's very easy to uh, uh, take a tour through those. But clearly, you know, pe- people love to go go to the House of Kings and, uh, from the original movie, even if they're not a fan of the, the first movie, just to go in there and say, I had dinner in the Chainsaw House, you know? I mean, how, how cool is that? So uh, they're, that, that, that's probably the go-to location of the tour. So is the, the, the cemetery. That's a good one. And and I have, have to give a shout-out to to the guys who are, who are working on the on the gas station at Bastrop, uh, uh, that gas station bar- barbecue shack that was in the first movie, they're completely renovating that and making that a chainsaw tourist place. I mean, they're, they're going to have stuff. Sales are going to have stuff to talk about. Uh, that type. They're they're actually doing what I think a lot of fans have, have always want, wanted to do with that place, which, which is to, to really dedicate it to to the movie and making an attraction uh, for, for Chainsaw fans to, to, to come and migrate there and check, check it out, buy Chainsaw related items and talk about it, check it out. Uh, so, so, so I'm really lo- looking forward to, to when that opens and hopefully soon. And of course, with Texas Chainsaw Tours that I run, we always go there by request time. Yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, we're bringing more fans out there once they do open. Cool, cool. Well, hey, I really appreciate you coming on the show to talk a little bit about your website and as a fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, well, at least the original, uh, as well, and to uh, promote it, why don't you give away the website names again? Right, right. My uh, uh, flagship website is texaschainsawmassacre.net. Uh, if you go to the news page, there's a link there to the, the Facebook page for, for that website. Uh, if you want, want to join the fan club, the, the official Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan club franchise. Uh, that's at tcmfanclub.com. Uh, you can register online there. And uh, if you ever come to Texas, to uh, Central Texas, and you want to take a tour of the film locations with me, uh, go to texaschainsawtours.com and uh, book your tour. Uh, so, so Texas Chainsaw Tours is on Facebook as well. And so is the fan club that's a private group for members only. Awesome. Well, again, thank you very much, Tim, for coming on the show with us. We really appreciate it. Bye, Chris.